Hey guys, welcome to another video by Fully Informed Trade or Fi Trade for short. My name is Alex and I just want to go ahead and review the markets, talk about the stock, commodity, bond, and forex markets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the data. Um, the dollar index went ahead and had its double top and it wasn't able to break it just because there wasn't enough of a catalyst and some speculate on Federal Reserve intervention. Um, I believe that if Federal Reserve in intervention is real or true, then the only thing that the Federal Reserve can't do is stop a real market correction caused by investors bailing out of stocks or short-term speculators bailing out of stocks once earnings have already been reported. Then that's probably going to happen towards the end of January. And once, once that happens, once January is somewhat over and companies have reported their earnings, um, stocks pull back, dollar index goes up, commodities pull back as well. And uh, that's pretty much what I'm anticipating. And we can see the resist. We will most likely see some resistance after that at around eighty-three dollars. So let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is the E-mini S&P 500. And I think that um, historically, once you get that percent K down to fifty, uh, there's a high possibility that markets will pull back. But that still stands because we're 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 in the middle of an earnings hyped rally. But we're gonna have to wait towards the end of January, somewhere around January January twenty twenty onwards. That's when you're gonna see some really major market action that's negative. So because of that, just because of that, we gotta be a little cautious. We we even if you're buying into the market right now. Uh, you should only buy stocks that have been reported earnings. And the second criteria would be to not hold on to stack stocks or any type of stock for that matter after earnings have already been announced. If you follow those two rules, chances are you won't get screwed over. All right, next, let's go ahead and analyze the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And let's go ahead and review the sectors and the different indexes. First of all, let's go ahead and review the major indexes, Dow Jones Industrial Average up 0.30%, S&P 500 was up 0.37%, NASDAQ Composite was up 0.33%, New York Stock Exchange Composite was up 66.66%, Russell 2000 was up 0.40%, and the S&P 400 Mid Cap was up 0.39%, S&P 600 Small Cap was up 0.26%. Let's go ahead and review the sectors. Um, Consumer discretionary was negative 0.03%. Consumer staples was negative 0.08%. Energy was positive 1.66%. Financials was positive 0.40%. Healthcare positive 0.50%. Industrial positive 0.37%. Materials positive 0.81%. Technology negative 0.16%. Utilities positive 0.14%. The top three performers for today was energy at positive 1.66%. Materials at 0.81%. And the healthcare sector by 0.50%. Basically, the oil companies did best. Following that, manufacturers, or not merely manufacturers, but materials, uh, stuff like gold, copper companies, stuff that people have, that mine materials. And uh, following that, you got healthcare, stuff like uh, Pfizer, uh, people who create drugs, stuff like Johnson and Johnson, companies like that. So. Let's go ahead and dive into the data. First of all, Dow Jones Industrial Average continues as somewhat of an upwards trend. The multi-year trend is still positive, whereas the short-term trend is relatively negative according to this. However, I feel that the markets will continue going a little bit higher, it'll inch just a bit higher towards the end of the month, and then it will pull back after an earnings hyped rally. And finally reaches it right finally reaches its pinnacle and starts pulling back. And uh we can pretty much anticipate a three to ten percent correction that the Federal Reserve most likely won't be able to stop, won't be, won't, will most likely won't be able to hold back because uh, you you can only do so much as a single entity against a flock of uh, hogs being slaughtered and fleeing the markets. So let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is XAU USDLN. Pretty much, that's a gold spot or the gold forex. Um, and pretty much every I don't I don't really like uh, buying into gold right now, and it's mainly because we got above this trend line. And uh, yeah, you find some support right here, but I still don't find it too good. We still have that head and shoulder right there. This could just be a short-term relief rally. And anytime anybody ever buys above this major trend line, it took them a quite a bit of a long time to get a return back from it. So. That gives you a basic idea. I wouldn't really take on the risk of doing it. 
and if you were to ever buy back into gold it should be at somewhat of a pullback somewhere around here somewhere around here would be good yeah, somewhere around 1260 would be a good level to try and get back in on it um, if if we if we look back a bit uh, this 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 would be a good area to just get back into as long as you don't buy at the very top of a trend line you should be able to make a return on investment within a couple of weeks or months but if you were to buy at the very peak or near the peak of trend peak of the trend line all that really happens is that you're stuck with this position that's overvalued and you have to wait a couple of years for yourself to liquidate at somewhat of a profit for example if you look at December of 2000 and nine to be at a profit you would have had to wait till around September or October of 2010 so basic idea here if you're a longer term investor in gold now is not the time to buy now is not the time to sell but now is definitely not the time to buy if you're a longer term longer term you should look somewhere around 1250 maybe even a little bit below that as well let's go ahead and look at the XAG USDO now here, here's where I forecast a uh, uh, head and shoulder pattern. And what, well, how's that gonna happen? Well, I feel with the short time that silver has, it's gonna find some weakness somewhere around this previous shoulder, right around here. Once earnings season comes to a close, you're gonna see the markets go ahead and say uh, they're gonna go ahead and sell their stocks. When sell, stocks sell, dollar goes up, dollar goes up, commodities respond negatively, and they too start to pull back. And when they start pulling back, chances are it's gonna turn into another head and shoulder pattern, except in the silver market. So, even if you were to buy, buy at your own peril, it's uh, finding some resistance at the 20 day moving average. And uh, if this head and shoulder pattern, and if I was able to supposedly project a head and shoulder pattern before it ever formed, that would be pretty cool. I'd probably be called a genius or whatever, but let's get let's get honest here, guys. Um, I don't feel that it's that safe to go ahead and buy near the top of this multi-year trend line. And if you are a longer term investor in the silver market, now is not the time to buy. Now is most likely the time to go ahead and sell your position in silver because there is some serious risk involved in trading in silver at this point I'd honestly consider uh, uh, I'd honestly consider waiting until um, you're within this trend line and you buy somewhere on this trend line later on in the future at least get I mean at least wait until the market pulls back by around 10 to 20 percent that way you know that you might that you, your chances are you're probably going to get a better chance or a shot and making profit in a shorter period of time. Also, if you're a futures trader and you can go short, or if you can go short on the SLV, um, now is not exactly the time yet. We gotta wait for that head and shoulder pattern to form that I'm anticipating within the next uh, couple weeks. It forms, then you can say, hey, if it's starting to pull back after the head and shoulder pattern, you got a great opportunity, and it can also turn into an A pattern. And an A pattern is pretty much something that goes like this. It turns into an A and then it stubs itself way down like that. Okay, that's an A. Of course, you didn't see that in this pattern, but if a head and shoulder starts to complete itself, you'll see a major A pattern. And if an A pattern shows up, that's a good that's a good opportunity to go ahead and short the markets. Let's go ahead and look at the bond market. Bond market, um, on the multi-year trend, I still feel that it's negative. As stocks become more and more appealing and more and more attractive, you're gonna find bond investors finding their bond yields not attractive enough, not good enough to compete with the stock market. However, if we go ahead and zoom back in August, towards the end of August, uh, bond market was at, at around give or take 131. It appreciated by give or take around 10 to 15 percent. What happened in that time on the Dow Jones Industrial Average? Well, let's go ahead and look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average at around uh, give or take uh, somewhere around August. At towards the end of August, it was at its lows. Okay, so August at the very end of August, it was at its lows. Uh, very important, 10,000 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. What was the bond market doing in response? Well, bond market was having one good time at around 133 to 134. So, what should we think? Well, if the markets pull back in response to an earnings fuel rally then chances are the bond market should have some room or some strength or some uh, something left, some gas left in it to go ahead and push itself back up to around the 126, the 125, and possibly the 127 level. 
And because of that, I feel that there's some gas left in the tank for the bond market, but the multi-year trend is still negative. So the midterm, great some great some great opportunities for bond speculators. But also, if 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 you're one of those investors that kind of got disappointed by some earnings these companies have made, you sold in a panic. Right now is not a bad time to consider some safe stocks to buy. Stuff like Campbell Soup, Exxon Mobil, or uh, Treasury bonds for that matter. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next chart, which is the crude oil market. Crude oil market really had a nice day, um, it, but I, I still feel that the, there's there's a uh, there's a possibility that we could break below this trend line, and then and then we could see some negative uh, movements on an intraday uh, from an intraday perspective on the chart. So. Also, if we, the main reason why you also have some crude oil being bought up right now it was mainly, it was most, most likely because um, investors were speculating on great, uh, great impact caused by the oil line in Alaska breaking on BP and likewise you diminish supply for the markets. So because of that, uh, traders in crude oil continue to speculate that it should go up in price. Likewise, companies in the energy sector which is the XLE, uh, go up by, on average by around 1.66%. Volatility index, volatility index isn't that hot right now. We should wait until the head and shoulder pattern starts forming in the commodity markets and the stock market. Uh, earnings fuel rally comes to a close and we see a topping pattern on the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the S&P 500. That will be the opportunity for speculators to go ahead and buy up some volatility index. For right now, any position in the volatility index should be only used as a hedge protect against unforeseen circumstances. That's all I want to go ahead and go over for today. If you guys want to go ahead and check out the charting software that I use, please be sure to check out the link below or above this video. Thank you guys so much for going ahead and supporting me and watching my videos. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, folks. Goodbye.